Webster's. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman on this Friday, the 2nd of June. We're looking at the Dow up 373 points. Now, this is going to be really important because if the Dow starts to go on a strength here, it means that you can start to see a pullback in stocks like, let's see where NVIDIA is trading right now. Uh, NVIDIA tried to rally, and I had said uh, when I did my uh, show just the other day, and also when I did my I talk to the Boston Investors Group on Wednesday, Wednesday night, I said I drew in the rectangle that that's kind of key, and that we need to see what happens over the next few days. But there was a really good chance by um, the second week of June, if not earlier than that, that NVIDIA starts to test the low that was made on the gap up low at 394.80 on the 25th of uh, of May. Okay, so let's get back to other, some other things here. We're looking at the Dow up sharply at 383. And it's so interesting. We had the long position. This is, We've still got a very long position from October lows. But we've had trading positions for, uh, for ages, in and out and in and out, uh, short and long, uh, long mostly the Dow um the three times long, we've, we've used the S&P short periodically. But this, we were long, and we just got stopped out. Now, actually, we got stopped out, and then it went even lower. And then it turned around. And yesterday, I was really debating. I, I'm liking what's going on here with the rectangle formation in the weekly chart, the fact that we held that support at the low that was made just the other day in the 32,500s. So that just says that the Dow could start to find some strength as we rotate. And this is the whole thing about rotation. rotational corrections means it's like the Statue of Liberty. You've got your left side, your outside another Statue of Liberty, the, uh, the, the justice, scales of justice. You've got your left side, you've got your right side. You're constantly trying to balance the two so that while one sector that's been very strong takes a bit of a breather, other sectors go on. So let me just do this XLI. I haven't done this for ages. I'm not even sure that it's updated. No, we went underneath the support. Now it's coming back into the rectangle. And I drew this in as the Chevron Wave um, stalk leg formation. That turned down the last two weeks. It kind of changes the pattern a little bit, but I'll still keep it in here for the moment. So this is really the S&P Select Industrial Spider Fund. Remember, this is Technical Friday, so I'm jumping all over the show to show you that the thinking has to be as broad as possible right now. You cannot just say, oh, my God, we're overbought. These guys, wins. this is like 2000. This has got, you know, this is so far from the year 2000 that it is, it is like, it is like the it's like your aperitif. It's your introduction to what's going to happen in the markets when things really good cooking at some point. Um, so all I'm saying is, in the context of uh, the Dow 30, those are not the industrials. That's just the Dow 30. It's a fabulous medium. It doesn't mean that it's a, a successful medium. It just says that is in fact. Uh, 30 stocks that, that comprises, maybe there's a little overlap with one or two, but it comprises the broadest measure of the economy that you can get. So with that said, the XLI is a lot more industrial because it, it has more, just on a balance, it, it seems to me it has more industrials. But when you think of uh, um, Home Depot, I suppose in a way you can call it a, a, a cyclical. But tell me, uh, you know, you're thinking here is as uh, Wal Walgreen or uh, Verizon, uh, Merck, these are not cyclicals. Okay, so the S&P Industrials has held very well. The nine period moving average in the monthly chart is still good. The weekly chart is in this oval pattern I call the stalk leg formation. I don't want to go into it, even though it's technical Friday, just yet because it, I, I, I need more proof. And the, the, the daily chart has got the rectangle. It took it out. Now it's gone back in. It's breaking the midpoint. I remember I drew this line right there. 
I said, that's really important because if you take it out, you're probably going to go to the lower part of the rectangle uh, support level, horizontal support, and you've done that. Now you're above it. So that says we could, in fact, get some kind of a rotation here. That's really important. All right, let's get back to our story. I uh, just wanted to show you something with the S&P. I, I am not a big fan. Well, first of all, I love the Chapman Wave Inside Track Repellenzer. You know, I've done so many uh, webinars and all of that. If you're a subscriber, you know that I've got a ton of webinars up on my site. You, they're free for you to go and peruse and go through as many times as you want. Look at the narrowing of this rising wedge formation in the S&P. And we've just gone in three bars from a D to a leg E. That means I have no choice but to circle it to say, hey, this... <laughs> I'm, I'm embarrassed to do this. This could turn into an instant restart, which means you can go to four higher peaks from here. But at the same time, it's also where you've got to look at many other indicators. Well, the main, the nine is over the 14. That's great. The price is way over the nine. That's great. The MACD is good. It's not as strong as it was going to the, the level in um, April, going to early May, but it's still good. The stochastics uh, at 79.32, that's 80% is what I like. So it's just under that. That's good. On balance volume is, is running, but it's not overboard. That's good. I'm not going to fight that trend. Uh, now I want to show you something very interesting. Look at this, the ES. This is the continuous contract. It broke the resistance today of the Chapman Wave inside track um, repellent zone. That means we'll see where it closes, but if we can close two out of three sessions above that line, that's saying, you know what? You've created a higher level of support, and that support now would be in the 42.20. It's at 42.63 right now, 35. 42.20 to the 41. I can go all the way down to the 40, 41.88 area, all right? And, but look at this. This is different to the actual index itself. I like to use this as a gauge. And look what we've done. We've gone, I can now change that. Remember, you can go back in the Chapman Wave methodology and I, I wouldn't call it correct because this is not incorrect, but you can, you can modify some of the uh, notations uh, going back just because you always want to know that you're in the right sequence of, of uh, the, the higher peaks or lower troughs. So look, that becomes a new buy signal right there. That was the week of early March. And all of a sudden, you've got a very quick peak A, one bar rest in the weekly chart, Legs, leg B goes to peak B, one bar rest, peak C goes to one. This is a textbook case of something that you never see. <laughs> so is it a textbook case of what you never see? Yeah, it's a very good example of something that's really unusual. Why is it unusual? Because every other bar has had a higher high, not a higher low, but a higher high. And that's really important because what it says is the quicker you get from P, B to C to D, and I love 136 is my rule of thumb, any any move that you're making, if you've got one bar um, rest and then you go to a new high or a new low, a recovery high or a recovery low, that's, that's really good. If it's three bars, that's still pretty good. Six bars says you almost have to restart, like right here. There was all this rest before it took off again, and that becomes a very powerful move to the upside. Look here, we went to our peak F slash C. One, two, three, four, five. The sixth bar went to leg D in the daily chart. And that's got enough power now that if it doesn't fail immediately, uh, it can go high. And in this particular case, you've got one bar between leg D. I think we're really close to some kind of a digestive phase, just a digestive phase, not a big deal. And at the same time, what I'm looking at here is there is a potential for the uh, rollover into other areas. Look at KRE. I'll be back in a moment. We'll talk about the financials. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. Now, I just want to show you something using uh, this technique that I use all the time. Uh, here's the E-mini. It just did a fabulous run all the way to a peak after the doji candle top at about 9.40 this morning and then turned down sharply, made this H pattern that goes to the dreaded H, when tumbled all the way down to the uh, 42, about 42, 48 area, then ran up to a peak A, B, C, D, and now we're pulling back. I wouldn't be surprised at the high that we saw at uh, 42, 73, 75. Um, that's going to be the, the real challenge today. Can we break above it? And does this 10-minute chart start to become, is this a G or is it a B? That's why I have alternate counts, because uh, the price is going to tell you what it is. You don't want to just arbitrarily say, hey, look, that looks like a G to me, and we're pulling back. Look, the MACD is still good in the 10-minute chart. The, the stochastic did pull back, but the 9 is still way over the 14. There's still internal strength. So I just wanted to show you some things uh, that we do. Yeah, the, uh, okay, thank, thanks, Al. So here we go. Um, so questions have come in, and I'm going to go through them in a moment, but let me just do this. I want you to show you. Oh, so uh, for some of you, you have sent me questions um, because I've got this. Um, I, I had no choice with Com Comcast. They stopped one particular service that they had. Uh, it got redundant, and I got the new one, and it just fills me up with I, – I, I used to get so few uh, junk mail. I mean, I just very little every day now. On the one, I get quite a bit. On the other, I get 50 or 60. I never used to get this. I hope I can resolve that problem. So if I don't see your questions here, um, uh, just forgive me. I, will, I get to it sometimes the, the next day. But uh, did I just see something pop up here? I did. So um, here we go. Uh, the gap down in NVIDIA is starting. This should take the whole market down. Even hyping it won't save it. I, I don't know why you always say that I'm hyping. I have absolutely nothing to do with NVIDIA. In fact, I haven't even, I haven't even 
basically, I'm just following what I read. I have no idea, no clue as to, uh, I don't do anything in the semiconductor area. I know people who are involved in it, but I, I, it's not my area of expertise, but the chart is. And I'm just telling you now, don't do that. Don't import your own thinking into my thinking. I'm looking at NVIDIA and very objectively, I've given a whole thing, I did, I did it on Wednesday night, a whole panoply of what goes on after a gap up, what I like to see, what does happen, what doesn't happen. And I'm just saying to you that I think that this higher 419.38, although we could have a little one pop to the upside, I think that over a period of two weeks, we'll come back down and get into the gap, not full the gap, but go into the gap. That's all I'm saying. So that's what I would like to just mention there. And that goes, that doesn't go all together with the semiconductors. Uh, it, it should, but I'm saying try to keep everything separate. Look at the beautiful weekly chart of the semiconductor index. Now it's overbought, uh, the, but the MACD is still strong. The nine is still way over the 14 and the price is way over the nine. The stochastic's pulling back to 82%. Try to think as objectively as you can as a technician. If you're doing fundamental analysis, that's something completely different. All right. So um, let me just uh, clarify that if you look at all of the chip stocks, look, peak F slash C and the SMH is the semiconductor index. Peak E in advanced micro devices. Marvell, very fine company, um, made a peak. Peak E. This is D right here that it gapped up, and it's an E, and it's going to digest these gains. There's nothing wrong with that. Respect that. It was a little bit abnormal, not a little bit, a lot, a lot abnormal, and it has to give some of it back. But if you're looking at uh, the overall, uh, the market itself, look the XLF. I'm not saying this is the place that you just jump into right now because it's going to. I'm saying I would love for some strength to start coming into the financials. And you do see that, yeah, there's Chapman Way falling axe formation, bumping into resistance right now. H pattern in the weekly chart held so far. Monthly chart has this very ugly pattern. It's The day is young. Just remember, and the week is young and the month is young. XLF has a lot of work to do, but this going off, Three days ago at the 31s, in the low 31s, and now at 3262, that is way better action. Look at KRE. Even though we were long, we just got stopped out and then it popped up. I'm watching this closely. I want to see that it is going to move. I want to see it market-wise. I want to see the S&P regional banking ETF on a very short-term basis. Uh, you can say anything you want. I would like to go to GE because this has been a stellar performer. It's just gone to a leg D in the weekly chart and the daily chart. If I can just get this updated right now, there it goes. The daily chart has gone to a leg E. And if you look at the technicals, they're not confirming the rally. And this just says to me, be careful. And what I've been saying is I think that this, this first two-week period in June is going to be kind of choppy. And this is going to be the big rotational uh, factor. And even more important, what I want you to say is, within the context of all this, I, 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 I needed to do this because I forgot about doing it in detail yesterday, always in greater detail that I, as I wanted. The TLT, which is the bond, the iShares 20-year Treasury bond ETF, they have 30 years as well, but 20-year is what it's called, has been in this rectangle since way back in November, and so November was it December? This is right. December, the week of the ninth. So 109 was the high, and the low later on was down in March at, at 98. And we've just been stuck between these two uh, rectangle highs and lows. That's all there is to it. And we did pop yesterday. We popped all the way to the 103s, uh, not quite 104. And as I said, way back in April, we could just be in this trading range. That was April, right? April, April, April is there, right there. So right back in April, I'm saying, hey, we're at 100. When Mike called in um, on the 13th of April, I said, we could be chopping up and down and up and down, but we could stay in this range for quite a long time. A, long, a narrow rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. All right, I want you to just go back to this for a second. Whoops. Uh, here's your peak D, and I said, be careful. D's are where other things can happen. Now we're pulling back again, and that just confirms for me this is probably a peak G in the 10-minute chart. Let's go to our caller. We have 
We have Brent in Martinez, California. Hi, Brent. How are you? I'm doing great, Basil. How are you? I'm very well. It was great to uh, meet up with you and your family uh, the other day. And uh, lovely family, I must say. And congratulations on your son's graduation. Thank you very much, Basil. We had a great time. It was a pleasure to meet with you as well. Well, good. You'd like to look at? If you wouldn't mind going back to, we of course talked about the two-click session, and just uh, yesterday was a beautiful example of that. Absolutely, so if you go back yes. to right about the open of the market, there was a, a, a low in the SPY of, I think, I believe it was like 416.79. And so, so I went back. ahead and I bought it in around 417. I actually did, for me, it was a four-click session because I did the initial low there. So I bought in around 65 cents. I was buying the 418 uh, calls, those daily ones I talked about with you on the spy and then I sold out at about a dollar ten and then I pulled back from that A and then I rebought at sixty five again and then that you could see then it just went throughout the whole day up till about noon and finally topped with the with the F I think. But we can take a look at it after the break. Yeah, so I've actually got the uh, 10 minute chart uh, of the E Mini right here. I'll be right back with Brenton Martinez, California, Dow's up 414, SB's up uh, 32. Dow. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019 finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 Days Risk-Free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. We're back in with Brent Martinez, California, and we're looking at the spy, the 10-minute spy, a 
Yeah. So, Brent, I have the attendance by PE yesterday at, uh, what was yesterday? It was yesterday the first? Uh, yeah. Oh, there's the 31st. Oh, that was, uh, 31st was at 3.50 in the afternoon, made a peak E, and then it started right on the 200 period moving average, doji candle, on the uh, first, the low was, yeah, 416.79, then went peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, E, and even an F right at the end of the day. Uh, that was at 3.20 in the afternoon, and a pull back sharply. Is that what you get? Exactly, yep, that's it. Good. So it was just so a beautiful you, example of it, and it, it was so, I don't know, just showed up so well. The different, you know, the A, the B, the C, the D, I mean, they're all like very distinct, and it was very minimal little pullbacks in there until that, you know, final one off of F. So I, let me just, since it's Technical Friday, I'm going to just use this to show something. So, first of all, I like to use it. We're using a one minute, a 10 minute chart, and yet I've got a 200 period moving average. There, I just put it there because you just do. I need it now. I don't even have to think about it. It's at four eighteen seventy nine. The the price is at four twenty five fifty three. But when it gets down, the magnet of the two hundred period moving average is just so powerful. Look how long it kept it there. From we can call it at ten twenty on the thirty uh, first of May, all the way through until it broke out. You can actually say yesterday at about 10.20 in the morning. This is Eastern time. That's when it started to lift off away from that 200-period moving average. So, And even within the 200-period moving average, at the peak A, peak B, C, D. And all we're doing identifying is each leg that goes up has a floating letter. When it makes a peak, in other words, a lower high by one penny, you can call it uh, a peak. And that's all. It's as simple as that. The difficulty is at that D... It held the nine period moving average. It did pull back. It was after the E, which was slightly higher than it really it had big red candles. And then for one or two uh, 10 minute bars, it went negative and then it started to move up again. And then today we had just one red bar, even though the nine period moving average went really close to turning down. And if you use this one indicator, if you were still long, uh, you could still be holding that. It's amazing. So that from the turnaround, just using the 10-minute chart, from the crossover at 10.40 yesterday, which was at, um, let's go to the high of the day, 418.48. Not the high of the day, the high of the bar. Uh, you would still be in. And right now it's starting to show signs. This is where we would get either the H pattern where it starts to fail you're running out of time. I like 136. So this consolidation in the 10-minute chart has gone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is the fifth bar, watching it closely. Um, and then to be able to get the turns, you need something smaller. You need the five-minute. I would, in this case, say the, the – oh, here we go again. Let me just show you something here in the SPY from the low that was made just after 10 o'clock this morning. I don't know if you've got uh, the uh, Tiger TV on right now. But there you are. There's your B. There's your C, and there's your D. This is your second peak D, and this time uh, it hasn't gone as strong above the D. It's turned around. We're watching to see, does it make an H pattern, the dreaded H pattern? It made one. This is the second one, so we're watching this closely. So, oh, I'm so pleased. Did you do anything this morning? No, I just, that was my trade. I'm pretty much, I mean, I have other stuff that I'm long, but I just have, I talked to you about, I really like those daily options i'm already like the weekly ones and now i'm really enjoying the the daily because now i can do it any day of the week and i just i've been uh the spy is really what i've been focusing on but i believe there's i know there's definitely the iwm and the triple q's as well and i'm just using the five minute chart is what i use and so i don't know other... maybe you can put it out there if anybody else knows of any other daily you know, options that are available. Those are the only ones that I'm aware of at the moment, and there's plenty to work with. So, but I just if there's anything else that anybody knows, yeah, I'd, I'd be interested in knowing about it. Yeah, it's worth knowing. But I'm going to say, you know, stick to it, when you're starting off something in a new way. That is not a new style, but a new trading position, which will now be a daily options. Maybe just stick to something till you really get it down, and then you can start to go to other areas, even though you're using pretty much the same technique. But my, my thinking here is, like, I, I stick mostly to the the, uh, the, the S&P futures. I mean, I just kind of what I like. Um, 
but the technique should be applicable to anything else. But uh, I'm just saying, you've got this, really get into it as you have started to do right now, and then you will find that the transition to anything else it's just a moving part. You know, when someone calls me about a stock, I'll grab the, I'll grab, I'll put the symbol up, and then I'll be looking, and then I'll, I'll do my analysis, and it, I've done the daily, the weekly, the monthly, or maybe the one minute five, and then, and then I look to see what's the price. Sometimes I don't even know what the price is, and I don't even know what the issue is, and then I look at it, oh my God, this is a three dollar stock, or it's a three hundred dollar stock, and uh, you know, that shouldn't make any difference because chart patterns are chart patterns. But uh, c congratulations, that, that was, I'm so pleased I could hear about your trade yesterday. That was very good. I was looking at it and I said, yeah, I wonder if anybody had a, a two-click session here. And you had two two-click sessions. That's very good. All right, Basil. Thank you so much. Have yourself a wonderful day and a great weekend. Thank you. And, and regards to the family. Thank you very much for calling, Brent. Take care, Basil. Take care. So, folks, this is going to be very interesting because you can see as I'm doing this right now, look at the tussle between pulling back and rallying. And when you think about, I had someone the other day, um, no, not, it was three people actually on Wednesday say to me, oh my God, with a, with a debt ceiling and uh, what, what, what's going to happen? And I remember I said, so far, the stock market's saying it'll resolve itself without a panic, and you got to you got to look at it as chart patterns. And I I love if you can start to include in your thinking um, something like what what I talk about when I say I'm just doing two things at once here. When I start talking about the there we are. When I start talking about the rotational aspect that is so important because from from the let me just do this I, I want you to do it I'll do it now from the October low or let's just go to it in the you'll see what's happening look this is a brand new month so for the brand new month now we've got leg C extending into June in the monthly chart let's just go to the Dow since that's the one that uh, we, we do have positions in very long-term positions in um, so if you're looking at the October low, that October low is saying every time there's a, a very, very sharp pullback, it comes from higher levels. And the higher levels um, mean that at 18,213, the March low of, uh, oh, that was the March low of 2020. And that's what I, I've been talking about on the longer term. But in the shorter term, I've been saying, just to go down to the March low of 28,660, as long as we're holding up here, you know how the either the Fed or something comes in to support the market when you think everything's just gonna crash and, 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 and just sail to the downside, a waterfall cascade? Well, that's what I'm saying. I think that we've made a pretty serious low, the October low, and that even if you're looking at it on a shorter term, um, We've got tremendous support, and that's the most important thing. I'll be back. That was a the Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. So Chris came in. Uh, look in the den said, Basil, please discuss left side, right side analysis for the ES and the S&P. Earlier in the week, we thought June 5th it might come down. So, yes, that's exactly what I was looking at. The reason why I was in a, in a having positions that if they hit certain levels, we wanted to get in. One was the three times short, the S&P, where we didn't get it, we missed it. And we had the UDOW, which is the sh three times long, which got stopped out. I needed to see how we got through the first couple of days of um, of the week, and then what happened on Wednesday into Thursday. So I don't have any left side, right side price time match here that I can talk about. But let me get rid of this. Let me just clean this. Wait, I haven't finished it. Let me get back to that in a moment. I just want you to finish up there because I didn't do that. So I, I always do this. I write down the notes. I want you to talk about gaps today uh, and the speed of, I have done the one thing, which is the speed of the E-mini going from the continuous contract in the weekly chart going PK, peak B, peak C, and now in leg D. But this is what I want you to say. Um, if I can take gold just for a moment, and you see gold is now down. It keeps trying. It stopped at the 50-period moving average. That's one of those technical things I put in. I don't always use it. But if it hits, it hits. It's in it a few times now over the last two weeks. And now it's pulling back. So gold is not the place at this particular point. And that's just that's another reason why I wanted to buy the, uh, the financial area the other day. Because it seemed to me that gold, the... Treated as as a as a call position on the put position of the, of the overall market, uh, the economy that is. Um, so gold is something that people, big you know, countries and big institutions go to when they're getting real nervous about the economy. But in this particular instance, it seemed to me that gold had made a pretty serious top in terms of time. I don't know so much yet about price, and therefore, it wasn't really in play. That's number one. So number two is silver concurred. Look, silver's acting. It's had a nice rally. Even today, it's had a nice rally. If you look at the, the weekly chart, it just says, yep, it's now probably in a, in a trading range. If you look at high-grade copper, I just want to add that now before I do the other stuff with the left side, right side price time match, which I'll show you in a moment. You're looking at uh, copper rallying okay today, but it really is looking pretty weak overall. I always add wood, the iShares, global forestry, and timber ETF. Um, yeah, it's had a nice bounce, but it's got this lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m pattern here in the weekly. So it's it's kind of dull. If you go to crude oil, crude oil's made the lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m, went to a lower low. And the way I see it here, because it's held the Chapman Roman candle for three weeks, um, that says that 
the low that was made right here at about 64 something of the continuous contract. Let me give you the exact price. Did I say 64? Uh, why is it not right? It's 63.70. Five weeks ago, it looks to me like now gold can go in, uh, sorry, uh, crude oil can go into this range right here. And if the market keeps rallying, it means this, that we could actually go to the top of the range. But I still see crude oil as just being in a trading range. Let me just sum it up that way. If you're looking at the TLT, as I said, TLT trading range, even though we've had a correction from the low, we've had a bounce, and now we're giving back some of it. So it just says that yields are still stuck in a range for the moment, all inching towards the high side, but still stuck in a range. What am I leaving out? And just a real quickly, the VIX index. So the VIX index uh, had pulled back quite sharply, tried to rally yesterday, and then boom, hit the nine period moving average, and then slumped, and now it's down to 14. This is the first time in about two years that we start to see a little bit of a normalization of the VIX. It used to be in the 11, 10, 9, 8 area, and then it was screaming up into the 20s, 30s. Um, now I think it's normalized, but if at any point you start to see the volatility index trading on a closing basis above 14.89 right now, starting off at about 19.30, but then going to the 20s with triple-digit down days, a very strong 60-point or more uh, S&P, closes down to the downside that's a change it's not happened yet and this is saying the buying is still coming in now let me show you something else that i want you to do so i'll just use the spy for the moment because i think that's a cleaner chart pattern so what i've done is uh, if i take the higher 418.31 that was made uh, the week of uh, february yeah february the third and just do a left side right side price time match that takes you all the way to if I can get a date on that, uh, that takes you to July. I don't think it's July. I think that uh, my thinking was that if, uh, the beginning of June is going to be quite choppy. And a little later on in June, we really start to move back up again. Maybe everything's just being squeezed right now. So that's going to be really important. So what I'm looking at here is this pattern that, you know how I like to draw the arch formation. I talk about it like that there. And it went down there. And now you've got a larger arch formation, that there. And that just says to me, the lopsided gravy cup is a pattern. That's the reason why in the uh, S&P cash, I have the big rectangle. Because what it says is, there's a lopsided move that says you could get there sooner. If I take a, a different candle for the midpoint, uh, we could get there in the next week or two. So I'm watching this very closely. And once again, the very quick peak A, B, C, and D in the futures. Now, I love the cash. Cash is the, is the position that you should always use for analysis. That's your route. The Dow Industrials, the S&P, SBX, uh, the NDX 100, uh, the Qs and the SPY and the Diamonds are derivatives of that. So in this particular instance, we, we, we're talking about the SPY. And that's just saying this move now is starting to accelerate. The unbalanced volume is not close to being overbought, but it's running strongly. The stochastic's flat at 92.6%. That's fabulous. That's the reason why, if I, I'd said before, that if we're going to go short, it's probably just a real quick position. We never went short, but I didn't get back into the, into the, uh, the trading position of the UDOW. I think that was a mistake, and I felt at the time that I was trying, I was being influenced by other things and not just doing the pure technical analysis. We still have long positions they've done really, really well, um, and, but they, they should be, some of them should have a digestive phase. So within that, I'm saying that the SPY, now I need to get rid of this again just because I think looking at it, um, no, you can see it very nicely. Okay, I'm looking at Tiger YouTube. So this is a quick D to E, and it's a very strong E. The stronger the E is after the peak D, the less likely it's an instant restart. The greater the chances are it's actually an E, and it could go to an F, but this is not going to be an instant restart without a pull, big pullback uh, going to another peak D to the upside. So I hope I'm answering that question. In other words, you remember I gave it a couple of days. I want you to see what was happening because we were really on the cusp of pulling back quite sharply, and each time you got saved, and then rallied, and each time you got selling, it was just stuck in a range, 
Now we're coming out of the range. I want to go back to the E-mini right now. Remember, I was talking about a two-click session um, with uh, Brent just now. I didn't do the two-click session because I was doing my show. I decided that I would just get out. Um, can't complain on that big, sharp pullback. But here we are. This is A. And I have to call this. There's no H. So this has to be called B. So that says today should be very good. We should close very strongly. But on a very short-term basis, we make yet another D in the one-minute chart. So I'm moving around as if they're going from a daily to a monthly. You don't want to really do that. I should have the five-minute in between. I just haven't had time for that. So we have a break coming up. We've got to begin. We'll be back just a little bit. I'll be right back, Basil Chapman. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. I was asked about a Caterpillar and a Southern Copper. So let me just go backwards here. I actually put the can. Let me go this. Yes, Southern Copper. Very strong move. Leg B. It seems to me it's making a high-level consolidation in the monthly, in, in the weekly chart. Monthly chart has gone to a peak D. Uh, I would just suggest that because copper has been weak, that I, as a trade, I'd probably say I'm, I'd rather be looking at high-grade copper. Uh, so Southern Copper is trading at 71.43 SCCO. It looks it's improving. The MACD did cross positive. Stochastic's good, so it's got a buy signal. Hasn't yet confirmed to a buy mode because that that. Uh, on balance volume is lagging. Same thing with uh, Caterpillar, but I would suggest to you that these are the clues. I'm pleased you pointed that out, uh, uh, 
uh, baseball eyeballs in the in the in the uh, Tiger YouTube, because that just suggests that if we start to see, I'm putting this together with the XLF, same kind of patterns here. If we start to see this rotation broaden out, and that's the whole thing about this week. That's what I'm saying. I think a choppy week in some areas, other areas might be strengthened, and that's going to be. This makes it really important for me at the closer when I do my overview uh, video weekend video for subscribers to my opening call tomorrow. I'm going to be talking about a lot of potential trades. That's what I've been talking about for some time. What are we looking at for these first couple of months going into the summer period, uh, th next, say, two, three months? And I think we're starting to see some clarity here. I like what I see. It's starting to improve a lot. Um, I'm, I, the overbought situation in some of the uh, tech sector, that needs to resolve. Just it needs to be just the digestive phase. But I love the rotation. That was, to me, the most important thing. So with that said, um, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, stay tuned, great programming today, and have a wonderful weekend. Uh, I, as I said before, this, the fact that there's a rotation means that you have leadership coming in. We're going to be watching even to see what the IWM, the Russell 2000, and they show some leadership here. It's going to be a fabulous period coming up in the next week or two if you make some decisions.